Hello and welcome to Minigame, a podcast about video game stories and why we love them. I'm Michael Ferris. Halloween feels like it just ended, and despite all of the spookiness and costumes and horror movie marathons of the holiday, for me the horror genre belongs to winter. Something about the cold and snow gives off a very isolating feeling that can make for a very creepy atmosphere. This atmosphere surrounds one of my favorite horror games of the past decade, Until Dawn. Because it's not just the kills and gores that makes the game scary, but it's your role as the player that adds to the fear. The setup for Until Dawn is just like any typical 80s slasher film. A group of young adults go to their rich friend's cabin in the woods for a debaucherous weekend of booze and sex. As the evening progresses, they encounter one perilous event after another and have to make choices along the way to either survive or quickly die. What makes Until Dawn unique is that any of the characters can either survive or die. There's a butterfly effect system that tracks the choices you make, large or small, and the consequences thereof. For example, early in the game, one character is captured and you as her boyfriend gives chase. During several junctions in the chase, you can choose to take a risky path that is quick or a safer path that is slower. Depending on which path you take, your girlfriend is either saved, killed, or severely injured and is removed from the game for several chapters. The characters themselves take on the slasher film stereotypes. The jock, the nerd, the arty girl, and their hot friend. This combination of choice-based gameplay and the 80s film setup puts you as the player in a unique position. I of course started the game wanting everyone to survive, but later I felt more and more like the director of a horror film, wanting characters in peril at certain points, make last minute escapes, and even die when it makes the most narrative sense. It felt almost perverse to manipulate the characters in this way. This feeling is compounded in scenes that bookend each chapter, in which you are talked at by a mad psychiatrist and are given a series of tests about how you are feeling as a player. I would like to understand your feelings toward people who fear the dark. Do you share this fear? reflected in the way you are playing your game now is it not only do you have to make choices for the characters but the doctor directly confronts you with the consequences of your actions and your opinions of the characters the fourth wall is broken in a way that made me super uncomfortable and made me second guess every choice and opinion i had about the characters characters that i hated in the beginning became some of my favorites and vice versa Choices that I would make at the start of the game without making a second thought now stopped me in my tracks. These hesitations led to some of the characters being killed off in horrific ways. By the end of Until Dawn, I only had two members of the cast surviving. The fear and dangers came less and less from the horrors of the game and more from my decision-making skills and my personal fears. Normally, I would have another playthrough to try to get a perfect run, but in this case, I didn't want to. The choices I made were mine to make in the moment. Deliberately making choices to get a perfect run would be counterintuitive to the creative intentions of the game and my intentions as a player. I loved my playthrough that only had a few survivors, and that in itself is pretty scary. Thank you very much for listening. Executive producer of the Lore Party Podcast Network is Abu Zafar. Minigame is written and produced by Michael Ferris. Original music for Minigame is produced by Lawrence Kelly. Follow Lore Party on Twitter and Instagram at lore underscore party. And check out our website at loreparty.com. Subscribe to Minigame in your favorite podcasting app and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. It really helps me grow the show. Thank you very much for listening.